Hey, it's been a while. Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you being here to watch. I'm working on Brandon's GTO today. We're working on getting a AFR uh, gauge installed along with a wideband sensor. You can see we did the welding on this already. This is our, our mid pipe. So we've got our O2 sensor. We welded a bung in here. We've got our sensor installed. Now we're going to work on getting this back in the car. So the whole reason for doing this is because he needs to tune his car. He just moved here from, where were you at, Brandon? Virginia. Virginia. So he was in Virginia, and now he's at altitude in Colorado, and the car's not running so good. So we're going to do a little bit of tuning with uh, HP tuners, and we needed an AFR gauge and a sensor, a wideband O2 sensor, so we can get that done. So we're going to get at it. We're going to get that put back on. We've got, where are your gauges at? Both of them should be right there. EM wideband, and then we've also got the uh, oil pressure sensor also. So the reason for the AEM, I usually, I like glow shift stuff, I just love the way the gauges look. The reason for this AEM one is mainly because it's got a uh, an RS-232 output, so we can actually plug it directly into the laptop and use HP tuners with this and not have to connect it to the ECU. We can also data log it with uh, the VCM suite, so it'll be pretty cool. Um, I'll walk you guys through that and then we'll uh, show some of the tuning process too. There we go, we got our wideband installed and they always recommend a 45-ish degree angle. You don't wanna be completely flat and you don't wanna be straight up and down. You want it to have a little bit of uh, an angle on it so that it doesn't get any condensation in there. And then also, um, so that's why you don't want it flat, but straight up and down, it can get, uh, it can get extra buildup or extra carbon in it because obviously it's a gas and it wants to float. So um, yeah, 45 degree angle is what they recommend. So we got that done. We got our cable ran up, uh, up into the car and we just went through the, there's a little boot for the transmission right up in there. And we also are putting in an oil pressure gauge. So we've got the cable for that. Where did that go? Right up in the back. Ah, there it is. Yeah, so we got that run up in here for our oil pressure sending unit. And there's uh, the uh, factory sender is right down in here. You can't see it that well, but that'll plug into that as soon as we get in. in. Oh. Now on the inside of the car, we ran our, so the gauges are gonna be right up in here. You can see the, the wires tucked in there for now, but the gauges are gonna sit right up on top in a little gauge pillar or a gauge pod that sits right up on top here. And then down in here, we've got the wiring for our power and some of our signal that we're gonna need. All right, so we're out tuning right now and you can see that we've got, look at that, we've got AFR coming in here. There's our AFR gauge right there. That's money. So here's how we did it with this AEM gauge. This is the series that we've got, the 30-0300X series. It has an RS-232 output. And now if you don't know what that is, it's a serial communication protocol. And hooking that up, it, it even tells you right here what the pinout is to get that to work. So what it allows you to do is connect that directly to VCM suite or VCM scanner and monitor that AFR real time and data log that too. So to do this, you've got to have a, a USB to serial converter. See, here's my cable. This blue guy right here is the one that's got a end that plugs into the computer like that USB there. And then I've got a little um, adapter here that is a, um, it's a DB9 adapter to a Ethernet. And they make a lot of different adapters. I used this one because I already had it. They do make some DB9 connectors that... Uh, that are a little bit different than they have screw terminals. And all you've got to do is look at right here, it shows which pin it is. So like our ground is on pin five, see that? And then our signal wire is on pin two. So if you look at your connector right here, this one has numbers. Let's see if it'll focus on it. There you go, so you can see the little numbers on there. So that top right pin is five, and then two is the second one over on the top, oops, sorry. 
So that's how we figured out that portion of it. So pretty easy deal. And then as soon as we got that done, I plugged it in. Brandon, you might have to plug it in for me. <laughs> yeah, <I do. laughs> My left hand's only good for holding the glove. <laughs> so there we go. We plugged that in. And then we, you can see this little ethernet cable. All I did is ring it out to know which one was which. And for reference, the green wire on that, can you pull those up a little bit so we can see it? Yeah, so the green wire on the ethernet cable goes to our signal from the gauge. And then the um, the blue one, you can see up right there, gets tied into the, the ground signal. And then we get our, our real-time O2 sensor reading. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but anyways, right now, what we're working on is the idle. So we're monitoring it, starting it up, changing it a little bit, and trying to get the idle dialed in with the car hot. Um, so go ahead. I, I think I just, let me check and make sure. I just wrote the tune. I don't know, make sure, yeah. So right now we're adjusting right in this area. So if you look there, our KPA is 50. So we're right in between these cells and we're trying to get our um, VE table set up right. Go ahead and start it. Let me get this online again, go ahead. BCM scanner's taking a while to go online. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so you can see our, our air fuel ratio right now, it's matching with exactly what our gauge is, is showing. So I'm gonna walk you through real quick how to add a channel on here for this AEM gauge. So all we did, did you find a, a spare channel? It's gotta be off. We went to add channel. Then we went down here to our external inputs, and we did serial port, expand that guy out, we went to AEM, and we went to AEM AFR. When you double click on that, it'll pop it up in that menu back behind that's highlighted in blue right there. Pretty easy deal. Purring like a kitten now. It's getting better. We gotta work on a few other things. We got uh, the idle. Needs a little bit more work. We gotta see how the cold start is. And then we took a little bit more fuel away up top because it was running a little bit, a uh, little bit rich kind of see right here we got into it was lean in one cell and then it kind of went, uh, went a little too far the other way but man it's much better we were cruising it how long did we drive for it was good <laughs> it was fun just driving yes, tuning the car it's a good way to spend a Sunday Brandon thanks for trusting me with your car man I always love working on new stuff Thanks for getting it right. Yeah. It's the first time I've been in one of these GTOs. Have it? Yeah. It's nice. First time? It? it is. I like it, man. It's got the nice little leather, all black and clear. It's going to look good when you get that gauge pot up there. Yeah. I, I, I know the video there. doesn't do it justice, but <laughs> like they, yeah. there's a gauge pot that, that'll go right there. Like some Google. For, <laughs> for now, we just got to sit in there, but then you got to get your uh, oil pressure sender. We'll figure that out, too. I'm still stoked about that, uh, how easily that sensor connected to HP tuners. That was, oh, yeah, that, was amazing. that was so perfect. Literally first try. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and they, they, it's good. They're like, AEM sent it with the documentation you need to hook it up. Yeah. I mean, like, most people would have, or most of the, most stuff like that, it doesn't have a good, um, it doesn't come with good instructions. It was perfect. It was so easy. Always make sure you read the instructions. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Chop, chop, chop.